We are the men of Old Man Ministry, and we welcome you.
or you know, God always gave us natural things to symbolize the spiritual things. And he said the food is the word of God. And he said, in the grocery store, that warehouse that you was in, he said, that symbolizes the Bible. And I said, okay, God. And he began to show me, when you go into a grocery store, there's all kinds of things. You see the fruit, you know, they got them in sections. You see the fruit, you see the staples like the canned goods, the corn, the, the meal, the flour, and then you got the meat. You got the snack out, you got all kinds of different things. And God began to show me, he said, my word is going out of the heart of the people. He said, so when you went to gather food for the people, which is the word of God, and you went into the warehouse to get the food, all of it was gone. And I was like, okay, all of it was gone. Where was it gone? And he said it was full. It perished. Jesus. I said, okay, Lord, it perished. He said, if meat sets up too long, and you don't eat it, and you leave it out, and it's not properly stored, it perishes. It turns green. It's no good. He said it's full. He said the, the, my, the people, amen, they don't want the word of God anymore. They don't want to get in my word anymore. They refuse to hear me. He said, so the meat that I have prepared for them has spoiled. So you want to get the word to get the food, the, and, and which was the word. So when I say food, we're talking about the word. Mm -hmm. When you went to get the food for the people, my angel was sitting there letting you know that there was no more food for you to give the people because they didn't want it, so it's full. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I said, okay, God, so uh, who are you talking about, the people? He said, I'm using you to show you, not just in a specific church or specific region, but all over the world. He said, because some people will get the word, they hear the word, and it falls on deaf ground, deaf ears. They don't apply it. He said, he took me to Psalms 119 and 11. And it says, I have, the psalmist was saying, I have hidden your word in my heart, Lord, that I may not sin against you. I said, okay, God. He said, if, you, if my word was prevalent in the lives of the believers, they wouldn't sin against me. Wow. They wouldn't be doing all these things, amen, to bring shame to the word of God, to bring shame to the kingdom of God. Yes. So he took me and he was showing me, amen, like I said, about the grocery store. Now, in the grocery store, they set up things. So when you first come in, in most of the grocery stores, you're going to see the produce aisle. And he began to take me, amen, through every aisle. And show me different things about that. He said, now when you have your staples, those are your sugars, your 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 um your salt and stuff, those are little things you need to make a meal with. And then he began to take me to the meal, the flour, and stuff like that. I'm not gonna go into all, but I just want to give you the, the 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 meat of what he's saying here. And then he began to take me to the meat counter. He said, now, you can buy the cheap, you know, a lot of people buy chicken. That's an inexpensive thing to buy to make a meal. He said, but then there's your lobsters, there's your steaks, there's all of the, the shrimp and all that. Now, when you buy the shrimp, you're going to pay a pretty hot price. They're expensive. Some steaks are so expensive. The shrimp, expensive. He said, you're going to come out your pocket with that. He said, just like in my word, he said, I'm going to flip this to you and show you. There is food for everyone in my word. Yes. In the Bible, there's something for everybody. When you go into a situation, you can look in the Bible and there's a word for you. Yes. Just like in the grocery store, there is food for everybody in the grocery store. Now, what your money can afford is totally different. Right. Right. Some people can't afford right. steak, so they get chicken. Right. But some people's prayers, they love the meat. He said, and that's how it is in my word. Some people like the meat of the word. Some people like to gain wisdom and knowledge and revelation. They ponder on my word. He said, but then they're those on the surface. Are you there? Jesus. That only want the milk. That only want what's easily processed. See, with, with meat, you got to chew that thing. Some steaks you got to chew and chew and chew so you can make sure that you chew it fine enough so you can digest it. Yes. 
He said, but some of my people don't want to digest the word. So they want to begin to just stay on the food that they can chew and that they can digest easily. He said, when that happens, you ain't paying no price. There's nothing that you're giving up. If you stay on the surface of a word, you're not giving up nothing. You're not learning really nothing. But you're taking things at face value. But when you begin to ponder, and you begin to allow God to give you that revelation. Yes. What I see on the surface, you can see deeper. Yes. Come on, God. Come on. God said, I'm trying to take my people deeper. Deeper. Yes. And they refuse to digest the food so it's full. Come on, Jesus. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, Lord. Oh, my God. Y'all stick with me. I'm telling y'all. Go with me to Luke 12 and 48. The Bible tells us. Luke 12 and 48. Glory to God. I said, Lord, I said, it was a it was a big warehouse, guys. And the Lord began to show me how this warehouse was full just like a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And when you go in a grocery store, you hardly ever see empty shelves unless it's a shortest COVID going on, the trucks had ran. Right. But the whole warehouse was empty. So there was no food. The food was spoiled because people refused to come get the food. Jesus. Now you know that canned goods can't spoil, but they expire. Because I said, now God, if I'm going to teach this thing, you're going to have to show me. He said, canned goods, I said, now canned goods, they don't spoil. And then God said, but they expire. Yes. Wow. Some people like to eat expired things. Jesus. God done already been through dealing with you on that. My Lord. It's expired. It can't do you no good. When you eat things that are expired, you can get sick. You can get food poisoning. You start vomiting because it's expired. It, it, it can't digest. It's, it's no good. Jesus. Glory to God. Luke 12 and 48. Somebody read it for me. But he that knew not But he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with fruit stripes. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let's say this is wrong. I gave you the wrong thing. Luke 12 and 48. That's it. But he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes. Mm -hmm. The King James. Hold on one second. Okay. I don't know. To whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You read that? Mm -hmm. Did you go on now? But he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with a few stripes. For unto, for unto whomsoever much okay. is given of him shall be much required. And to, and to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask thee more. Okay. I didn't let you finish. Amen. 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 <laughs> so God, God was showing me. He said now, when much is given, much is required of you. So if you got to go into the store and you got a, a, a taste for steak and potatoes and, and all the fixings and, and the steak may be, or the Boston bud may be $50 a pound. You got high and expensive taste. So it be with the word of God. When you begin to meditate in the word of God, yeah. when you begin to go deep into the things of God, when God begins to reveal things to you, you don't want to go, your, your, your taste is expensive. You don't want to go back, amen, to the low level and be a mediocre. So that's going to cost you something. Because when much is given, much is required. So when you begin to ponder, when you begin to go into the word of God, and when you begin to seek his face, and he begins to show you revelation, that means he's pouring more in you. So when he pours more in you, more is required of you. Yes. Man, man. So what do you mean? When God says, amen, don't do this and don't do that on the surface, you're like, okay, I'm good. 
But when God begins to show you detail for detail and show you what you're doing and what he's telling you to stop, now, Jesus. now, something is expected of you. Yes. Because he's giving you a revelation. And we talked about that on last night. Whatever he's convicting you of, and he begins to give you that revelation, now you got to pay a high price. Now it's going to cost you sacrifice. Now you got to crucify your flesh. Yes. Now you got to, amen, make amends. You got to go and apologize. You got to go and forgive. Amen, because he's giving you a deeper revelation. Yes. Much given, much is required. When much is understood, when much is processed, when much is revealed, that much requires a price. You got to pay a price to eat good. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can make a meal out of anything, amen, uh -huh. but if you want to eat on the level yeah. of steak and lobster and shrimp every day, you got to pay a price. Yeah. If you want to, amen, throw in the spirit and the yeah. anointing of God, you got to pay a price. Yeah. That don't come easy. Yeah. That don't come by falling asleep That when you read. Uh -huh. That don't come, amen, by not fasting and praying. Uh -huh. That don't come, amen, by not crucifying your flesh. That don't come by by holding, by not holding your mouth. Amen. Hey, when well, you want to go off on somebody. Uh -huh. Woo. So when we begin, begin to get that expensive taste and we taste and see that the Lord is good and he begins to show us stuff. We can't walk any kind of way. Uh -huh. We can't gossip. We can't backbite. We can't treat people any kind of way. There's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. There's a price to pay for the preacher to get up here and yes. give you a word to change your situation. Yes. There's a price to pay for you to walk that straight and narrow road. There's a price to pay to get the kind of food that's going to make you grow. It's a point in a child and a baby, a newborn baby, they, they, they suck on the milk. They suck on the breast milk or they suck on the nipple of the bottle and they got milk. Yes. And then after a while, you can put some formula in the milk. And you know, like they say, wait, I think a couple of months, some people wait two months, they put rice in the cereal, they don't follow the instructions. Because it was like, my baby too skinny, I want fat baby. My baby ain't got no meat on his bone. Right, right. So they begin to start putting a formula in the in the milk and, right. and the baby begins to get plump. Right. Then after a while, that baby's not gonna want formula no more. I mean, um, not formula, they begin to put uh cereal in the milk. After a while, that baby's not gonna want formula or cereal anymore. Uh -huh. So now you're giving them baby food. And they begin to eat the baby food. But after a while, baby food is nasty and they need meat. Right. Hallelujah, there's something wrong if you see, amen, a five-year-old baby still eat baby food. Right, amen. A five-year-old baby still eat baby food. There's something wrong, amen, when we're grown and we're growing in the Lord, but we still want to process baby food. Jesus. See, when you eat baby food, you can gun it. You can wing it. It don't take nothing. Just chew on it. Just gun it with your gun because you ain't got no teeth. Yes. But when you want the meat of something. Meat, it takes time to chew it. Yes. You got to chew it. Have you ever had a piece of meat and it wasn't just as tender as it needs to be and you got to chew it and chew it and chew it and after a while you get tired of chewing and it and break it down, you just spit it out. Right. True. Like this meat is too hard. It ain't tender. You ain't season this or something and you spit it out. Right. Because we ain't got time to be trying to process it and, and digest it because it's too hard. Jesus. God said that's how my word is. People don't have time. It's too many commandments. It's too many things God telling me I got to give up. I don't want to chew that. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to spit this out. Give me some baby food. My God. Give me some mashed potatoes. Jesus. Have you ever had a piece of meat and it was a little too tough and you took your mashed potatoes and thinking, well, if I put a little bit of something soft with it and eat it together, maybe I can chew it better. Maybe I can process it better. Or you got your teeth, you ain't got no teeth in the back so you can't chew it correctly. God said, and I'm telling you, God began to show me all of this. He said, because my people, they don't want to chew it correctly. So if you can't chew correctly, most people are going to get partials. So you got a pair of partials and you can chew your food now. But then that food don't taste 
Bible partials. Oh my God. God said, my people, think of everything possible to do to not digest the word of God. Jesus. Now remember, the grocery store signifies the Bible. The food signifies the word of God. The grocery store was empty. It was void of the food because the people didn't want it. So when you pick up your Bible and you don't really want to do what it says and you don't really have the knowledge of what it says, guess what? You're not going to want to read your Bible. Because I don't understand what all these dies and is and shalt not and all this. You're not going to want to read it. He said that's how it is. They didn't want the food because they didn't want to digest it. They didn't want to do what it says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Romans 7 and 7. And, and in your spare time, like I said, you need to read Romans chapter 7. Paul says it best. And God began to show me, I said, okay, God, if it's a shortage of your word, people don't want the word, you know, what's going on? What's the problem? Why are we not wanting to digest the word? Because it's the word that's going to sustain us. It's the word that's going to keep us. It's the word that's going to teach us what we shouldn't be doing and what we should what we should be doing. It's the word that's going to show us that even though we're not perfect and we may fall, but we got to strive for perfect. For, for perfection because God's grace and mercy is there to cover us. Amen. But you don't know you have the grace of God if you're not getting in your word, amen, and getting revelation. Amen. Paul says in one in one chapter, should I continue to sin because grace abound? See, if you don't get in that word, you don't really understand what Paul is saying. Because when you hear the grace message, it, it makes you feel like, oh, I can do whatever I want to do and God's still good with me. I can go around and do whatever I say, whatever I can say whatever I want to say, do whatever I want to do and just repent and keep doing it. No. He said, shall you continue to sin just because I've given you grace? Come on. Not so. In chapter 7, amen, in, um, in, in Romans, Paul begins to talk about the law. And, and I want to paraphrase it, but you can read it uh, in your spare time. And God began to show me, he said, this is what's going on. He said, because, the okay, I think it's chapter 7 and 7. Yeah, read 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Okay, stop right there. God began to show me in that, in that scripture. Mm -hmm. He said, Because the commandment tells us, Amen, that we shall not kill. I'm going to use kill. Then we know that if we go and murder somebody, it's a sin. Mm -hmm. Because the law tells us the Ten Commandments said, Thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. Amen. But. My God. We know that there's consequences to killing somebody. You're going to go to jail. Right. You're going to do some time. But had we not had that law, had we not known that if we kill somebody, it wasn't a sin, guess what we'd be going around doing? Killing people. So what the what the law does or what sin does, it, it kind of sabotages you because Paul said that very thing that I didn't want to do, I find myself doing. And those things that I want to do, I can't quite seem to do it. Mm -hmm. Every time I want to do good, it's like sin it snares me. It trips me up. I want to read my word, but instead I go watch porn. Come on. I want to stop watching porn so I can read my word, but I can't seem to do that. I want to love my neighbor, but every time I try to go do it, they go the devil, amen. Somebody telling me they're talking about me. Uh -huh. I want to be faithful, but every time I try to be faithful, somebody's slipping in my DM. Uh -huh. Jesus. And when I make up in my mind, I'm not going to watch pornography no more. I find myself sneaking and doing it. Yes. Because sin has came, has become an ensnarement. Uh -huh. So when sin abounds, People don't want to read your word. They don't want to read their word. Yes. How can I read my word when I want to watch pornography? How can I read my word when I want to commit adultery? Yes. How can I, the word is far from me. I don't want to hear that. Uh -huh. I don't want to hear what I can't do. Yes. Jesus. So if you don't get in that word and understand what God is telling you,
you, you don't have to be responsible. Because God gave you that revelation. He gave it to me so you do that. He showed me that. And he said that's what people are doing. They're not getting in the word, learning who they are. They're not getting in the word, amen, and, and chewing it and, and, and letting it digest and letting it get in them. So that's why it's a shortage of the word. That's why it's a shortage of food. He used the food to show me it's a shortage of the word. Not that the word is not there for the people to get, but they don't want it. Right. Oh, my God. They throw it to the side. They put it in the garbage. So in a grocery store, now some grocery stores, if they got some ethics about them, when food begins to spoil, they take it and they throw it in the garbage or, or, or blend it, do whatever they got to do to this part of it. Have you ever eaten something that sour on your stomach? And then you're sick, you're vomiting, you got to take medicine. He said the word of God has soured on some of our stomachs. Because we don't want to, we, we chew it down. We, you know, you kind of take it and, oh, it's just really not that. And it was nasty and it was sour. Because we had it up on the shelf too long. Because we let it lay dormant too long. So it's sour. I hope I'm making sense. It's sour on our stomach. Amen. Because we refuse, amen, to get it when God was trying to give it to us. We refuse, amen, to heed the word of God. Amen. And we think that if we stay as a baby... We're not going to have the consequences Jesus. of those that know. Come on. My God. My God. Jesus. Help us, God. Yes. The Word of God. Go to Hebrews 4 and 12. Glory to God. When I got to the door, the threshold of the warehouse, and the lady was sitting there, and she began, it's like when she told me all the food gone, it's like there was sorrow in her eyes. And so again, of course, God, why was there sorrow in her eyes? He said, when my people refuse to grow, when my people refuse to seek me, when my people refuse to digest the word, when my people refuse, amen, to turn, amen, when my people refuse, amen, to, to welcome my grace and my forgiveness and turn from their sins, it sorrows me. Because every time we decide that we're not going to do what God has given us the strength to do. It's like we're putting him up on the cross afresh. It's like we're rejecting him again. God, I don't want you. I don't want that. That ain't for me. When he died for all of our sins, he died so that we can be made free. Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and the spirit, between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So when you get in the word of God, it exposes those places in you that needs to be delivered. It exposes those things in you. It, it shows your innermost thoughts and desires. It helps, it, when you get in your word, it helps you, amen, to look at yourself, amen, through a fine lens, magnifying glass, to see, okay, I'm not adding up to what God said I should look like. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when we see that we're not adding up to what God said we should look like, we should want to change. Right, right. If you're really looking at yourself in a mirror and you see something wrong with your outfit, you got to be saying, you're not going to just go out in public like right? that. You're going to change. He said, because my people refuse to change and let my word cut them and let my word fix them. See, when you get cut, it's not a bad thing because he's going he gonna to heal you up. He's going to put the salve on you. He's going to make sure that you don't stay wounded. He said, but my, my people refuse to let me sew them up. They, they refuse, amen, to humble themselves, amen, to hear my voice. They refuse, amen, to take heed to what I'm trying to show them. He said his word is alive and powerful. We don't serve a dead God. His word is so powerful. When we speak it, things change. Mountains move. Walls come down. Chains break. That's the kind of God we serve if we don't get his word. If we don't get deep in his word. We'll never know it. We'll never know his power in the fullness. We'll never know the what we have in him. 
We'll never know, amen, the depth of what it means that greater work shall we do. In Matthew 6 and 11, it talks about, amen, Jesus teaching the people how to pray. Because the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they was praying and they was having all these long, luxurious words and, and repetition, trying to make themselves look like they're praying and make themselves look good towards others. But he began to teach them the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And again, the bread represents the word. Yes. On the surface, when it says, give me, and I'm going to do some study. And on the surface, it's real simple. God, meet my needs. Meet my daily essential uh -huh. needs. Uh -huh. Give me this day my uh -huh. daily bread. Yes. Lord, you know, pay my water bill, God. Help me get the money to pay my rent. God, make sure me and my family have food to eat. Uh -huh. But on the spiritual side, when you begin to go deep and dissect that word, amen, that bread is your spiritual food. God, give me my spiritual food daily. God, show me your mystery, God. Help me get in that word, amen, so your revelation can come into me, that I can know, God, what you mean, so I can run to divide the word of God. Yes. Do you understand what I'm showing you? Naturally, if a person reads it, without interpretation from the Holy Ghost, without asking God to give you insight, give me my, give me this bread, my daily bread, and and forgive those that forgive my debtors and all that. God, I just want you to give me enough so I can make it today. My kids need this. My kids need that. God, just give me some provision. But God said, I'm trying to give you spiritual provision. Amen. I'm trying to take you to a level in me that you don't even have to keep asking me for stuff when you just speak it. I'm trying to give you the power, amen, that, amen, you don't have to keep praying to me and begging me. Some people just beg God and beg God because they don't know who they are in God. I'm trying to give you spiritual insight so that you can know that you are joint drunk air with me. And I'm a good father, so what father will not give you what you need? You don't have to be praying, give me my day, my daily bread. Give me this day, my daily bread. Uh -huh. No, God, I'm your righteousness. I'm joint air with you. Yeah. God, I thank you that there's nothing in my house that is lacking. I thank you, God, that my food, my refrigerator, my pantry is full. God, I thank you that we are healthy, God. Because your word said, God, that I am healed. Yes. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. But when you don't know the word, when you stay on the surface, when you skim the surface, you're not getting no meat. You're not getting no nourish nourishment, no nutrition. Yes. That's why people like spiritual junk food. Right. Give me a little sugar cone oh. piece of candy. Give me a hoop and a holler, a three-minute message. Now, I'm not saying it takes all day. Amen. But give me something that make me feel good. Right. Don't tell me nothing about coming out of sin. Don't tell me nothing about I got to stop doing nothing because I don't want to stop it. I'm going to do what I want to do. Amen. Just tell me that I got a house coming, a car coming. Amen. I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be prosperous. I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that. Right. Yes. And then you wonder why your teeth are decaying. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Spiritually, they just ain't no good. Because you didn't consume so much junk food. Amen. And people, amen. And that's why the Bible says much is given, much required. Because as men and women of God, amen, we are going to be, amen, it's, we're, we're going to be in trouble with God. Mm -hmm. yes. Because we're giving the people what we want to give. Yes. Yes. We don't want to correct nobody. We scared that people don't leave. We scared people not going to like us. This is not a, pop a popularity contest. Because you got to give the people the word of God. You got to give them something that's going to sustain them. You got to give them something that's going to help them. Yes, that's right. And then the blessings will flow. We serve a good God that will bless us. Yes, yes. But I want to be able to enjoy my blessings. I want to be able to multiply my blessings. I want to be able to walk up right. Amen. I don't want to bring shame to the gospel. I want to bring shame to the ministry. Praise God. Have you ever been there? Paul said, the law has shown me my sins. 
I wouldn't have never knew. I couldn't get away with that. If the law didn't say. We would have never knew. We can't go 50 in a 20 mile per hour zone. If the sign went up there saying 20 mile per hour. Ignorance does not mean you're doing the right thing because you want to remain ignorant. Jesus. Ignorant and you decide to remain ignorant, that's ignorant in itself. Right. Because you should want to know. But there does come a time, like Paul said, when even when you know to do right, it's something that keeps pulling on you. There's something that keeps, amen, making you do the opposite of what God is telling you. And that's where God's grace and mercy comes in. That's when we know that we need a Savior. That's when we know that God, that's when we go to God and say, God, I can't make this, I can't do this on my own. And God says, I'm going to give you some grace. I'm going to give you some favor. I'm going to give you mercy. My goodness is going to follow you. Amen. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to have fresh new benefits. Yeah, you may have messed up last night. You may have snapped. You may have did this. But tomorrow is a new day. And I got you covered. Amen. I'm going to pour out my faith. I'm going to pour out my grace. Amen. But you got to know who you are. You can't be afraid to come to me. The Bible said, come to the Lord boldly before the throne of, God, of grace. Yeah. But if you don't know that, God, I'm so sorry. Please don't kill me. Don't do this. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have did that. God, spare my life. Who goes to their parent, a good parent, a good father, <coughs> in fear of their life? Who goes begging, Dad, can you please give me enough money to eat? We don't have no food. Can, can you please go buy some food? Who does that? A good father is not going to make you beg for what you need. But we got to get in our word. Yes. God said it's a lack. The word is gone from our hearts. We don't have the word in our hearts no more. It, it has become null, void, and of no effect to us. When sin abounds in your life, grace cannot. Because we don't give grace, we don't give God enough time to make us over and put us on the part of who can do what he needs to do in our life. That dream, and when God began to reveal that to me, it really stuck to me and it bothered me. And I was going to talk to Bishop about it. I was like, well, I'm going to wait, God. Because the Lord was just continually giving me things. Mm -hmm. If there's a shortage, and it ain't even as, as much as there's a shortage of people preaching the word. It's a shortage of people writing the Bible in the word. Come on. It's a shortage of people telling people the truth. It's a shortage of people wanting the word. It's a shortage of people, amen, dissecting the word, letting it digest in them and them growing in the word. Yes. They've taken so many scriptures out of the Bible. Yes. Amen. They made they they watered it down so, amen, that 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 you can just drink it down, but you're still not getting any, any nourishment. You're still not getting the substance. Because it's the meat of the word, it's the revelation of the word. That's going to change your life. It's the power of God that moves in the word to change your situation. To change what's going on in your life. To heal your body. To heal your mind. Mm -hmm. Some of us are masking. We act in churchy. We act like we got it all together. We don't have to do that because we serve a God that can fix, make you have it all together. That can help you yes. have it all together. Amen. Amen. But you got to eat that spiritual food. Yeah. You got to want him. You got to want what he wants for you. And, and then and when, and when sin tries to entangle you and sabotage your life, you call on the one, amen, that can crush sin's head. Yes, you call on the one, amen, that can help you, amen, be glorified in his sight. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. A shortage of food. Yeah. Preachers. We got to make sure that this word that we bring in people is not junk food. Yes. And when we're sitting in the audience and we hear the word, we got to make sure we're digesting the word, amen, and just not letting it sit and rot, not doing anything with it. I pray I have said something today. I obey God, so whether you feel like it or not, it was from God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because God wants his people to go higher. 
Amen. Be blessed. Um, thank you for tuning in to our broadcast on today. I pray that something was said that blessed you. All of our contact information is on the screen if you would like to support, donate, or partner with us. Again, thank you for watching Whole Man Ministries Incorporated.